So you've been listening to proceedings at the International Court of Justice. This is day two of South Africa's petition against Israel. Uh, South Africa, as a reminder, accusing Israel of genocide and asking the court to order for provisional measures to stop uh, the way Israel is conducting this war. Now, that was... South Africa made its case yesterday. What we've been hearing over the last hour and a half or so, and we'll continue to hear after this coffee break, is Israel's defense against this allegation of uh, genocide. Al Jazeera's senior political analyst Marwan Bashara is with me. You've been listening along with me to this for the last hour and a half. I suppose we'll get into more detail on this, especially afterwards, when yes. we've heard the whole thing. But what's your initial reaction to what you've been hearing? Well, look, I think the, uh, the team, the legal team, started very weak. In fact, uh, some bits of it was almost illogical. The idea of what, to start a defense uh, of Israel in the case of genocide by saying about what about Hamas, I think that was quite weak. Uh, talking about Hamas... Uh, that was the legal advisor to Israel's foreign ministry who was yes. making that point mostly. Yes, absolutely. That's how it all started. And, and the idea of comparing Hamas's damage to Gaza with Israel's damage to Gaza, I thought that was just almost illogical, saying that Hamas also booby-trapped buildings when we know, and we've heard yesterday, how tens of thousands of bombs were dropped on Gaza by Israel. So making those comparisons seemed very strange to me, very weak. And the idea of trying to compare images, Israeli babies, really, Israelis want to compare the few babies there with seven, 8,000 babies killed. I thought also that was not a good line of defense. The second point that I thought was quite weak was the context, the idea that there is no context other than October 7, and mm. we cannot go back to 75 years of dispossession and occupation. I thought that was totally meritless. And third, the idea of the benevolence, how Israel does not aim to destroy civilians, but to protect civilians. I thought that was way beyond the logic of what we've seen unravel in plain sight over the past three months. Now you get to the strong points. The strong points were two, one technical and one profound. The technical one was dispute, that South Africa did not make enough effort to go and exchange views with Israel about the issue. And I think he could almost get Israel off technicality that, mm. wait a minute, these are two states that are yeah. supposed to have a dispute, not a union yeah, dispute. It's, a, it's an interesting one. There, there needs to be a dispute for the court to actually hear this case. Yes. Is there a dispute? He's saying, no, there isn't. Well, yesterday, uh, Dugar, the, uh, the South African judge, did claim that there was, and, and, uh, and, the, and the appeals by South Africa were basically dismissed. Now we're saying, uh, from, we're hearing from the Israelis that, no, they were not exactly dismissed. It was very short time, and it was Jewish holiday, and how we could we get those notes from them? We will, we, probably the judges will have to make decisions on that. Again, it's technicality more mm. than anything else, because there's a certain urgency here, mm. and the South Africans were not going to wait to the, for the procrastination of Israel to take its course until everyone in Gaza is destroyed and whatever. Anyway. The, the other strong point you think they made? I think the most, the strongest point was the framework and the intent. So you could claim that Israel carried heinous crimes, terrible crimes, and you can make all the claims you want, but is it genocide? Because if it's not genocide or under the genocide convention framed that way, then this court has no jurisdiction to discuss any of it. It doesn't matter how, how bad the situation is. Yeah, the case disappears, yeah. And his, ca and his case for the intent was as such. Israelis might be saying a lot of terrible things. They might be angry. They might be infuriated by the October 7 account. But does that add up to intent carried out by the war cabinet or the security cabinet, trickle down to the command of the military in order to carry a genocide against the Palestinians, destroying them in whole or in part? Does the anger and the statements, or Israel speaking for out of both sides of its mouth, like Netanyahu, like Gallant, does that add up to genocidal intent, or that just a bunch of Israelis being very angry and furiated at Hamas? Let's take this to our legal.